Hey, welcome back, Cloiso. Um, now, just really, this channel is all about bards and religion, uh, mostly about history, but uh, a lot of interest in the last one, so thanks for all the feedback and the comments and some lively discussions. And uh, looking at a bit more about uh, stuff we got about the bards in the King Arthur Conspiracy. So the follow-on from the last part, really, just read it out and then make a few comments. So the British, uh, quote from the book now, the British adopted some early apost apostolic Christian ideas neither AD 35 or the last year of Tiberius AD 37. This might come as a bit of a shock if you're not aware of this. Uh, we do have the book where Jesus is buried. We can read all about this um, early Christianity starting in Britain and going then from Britain to places like Gaul, Rome and elsewhere. So uh, don't let that be a stumbling block for you on this immediately. And the key point is that that um, original Christianity, and obviously it wasn't called Christianity quite at this point, uh, ties in with the Holy Family uh, fleeing from their persecution under the Romans to come to Britain, where they had uh, kindred spirits and brethren. And the curious thing is how similar the Druids and the Essenes were. So that seems to tie into this. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about the... Um, so we'll take it from there, okay? So the, the Vatican records say it was the last year of Tiberius when Christianity arrived in Britain. It's AD 37, before any Roman supposed invasion by Claudius even. Okay, so what we have here is that... Um, <laughs> right, so these early Christians believed in only one God and no Trinity. And at that time, so did all Christians. So, so the Druids and the Christians both believed in one God. But the idea of the Trinity came out of Egypt with Anastasius, the Bishop of Alexandria, and his followers, and was adopted at the Council of Nicaea in AD 324. Egypt had always had a trinity of Osiris, Isis, and Horus the Sun, who was also his father, Osiris. British bishops attended this council, where Jesus the Nazarene was elected God by a narrow majority in a democratic process. They did not attend the later church councils. They're like, all right, we're not going with this, we're out. So Jesus the Nazare Nazarene was acceptable because of his willingness to be sacrificed. And so in Druid thought, he had become Enlai Vavai, and early Christianity in Britain was grafted onto the Druid system in a manner suitable to the British mind. So I'm just going to stop there, actually. There's, there's more I'll put in the next video. This concept of Enai Vavai is is very important part of uh, the Druidic belief. The concept was they had reincarnation, uh, which will some black it point out. The Jewish faith also had it till about 1000 AD when they got rid of it because it was just making life even more unbearable for them, the persecution they were getting. The Druids also believed in a cycle of life, and you can read all this. Um, it's hidden in the Mabinogi, it doesn't take much to... De Once you know what you're looking for, it's all there. But origins and development and going through the cycle, right through different levels of creatures. It's very similar um, to some of the Eastern religions. And I always think it's curious, the word Bardism is so close to the word Buddhism. There are a lot of similarities. So... If, for example, you were a murderer or you committed a murder, a capital offence, the penalty would, uh, sorry, if you were not punished, if you died a natural death after that, that would be considered a sort of an unresolved uh, crime. And you slip right back down the recycle, right back, back down the, the levels come back as a slug or an amoeba or, or something like that, okay? Or depending on how far down you want to go. And you've got to come grinding your way back up again. Now, the only way to get round that was Enlai Vave. What would happen if you were convicted of a capital offence, say a murder, something like that, if you submitted yourself to the Druids, the Druids would then carry out the death sentence, a life for a life. Similar to the old Jewish eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It was a life for a life. And then the debt had been considered to be paid. And anyway, this is this is, seems to be where a lot of these ideas about grisly druids 
sacrificing people and executing them, that kind of thing. Whereas an execution, but it's a judicial execution, similar to if someone was hanged back in Britain up until the 60s or America in the electric chair or the French guillotine in more recent times. It's that kind of judicial killing rather than uh, a, a blood sacrifice to the gods or something. Now, where it ties in with Jesus is this idea that he put himself up for crucifixion even though he had not committed the sin. He hadn't killed anybody, he hadn't broken any laws, he did not deserve to die, but he put himself up to uh, give enlight vavai for other people. So this would have been an incredibly powerful message to the Druids, who already believed it was so important if you gave up your own life for your own crimes or sins, you might call them, or the sin is a bit of a, that, that concept came later. For them, this seems to be why uh, Christianity was so quickly and effectively grafted onto the existing or called pagan views or the Druidism that the British believed in. So that was a, a short video, a lot to think about. And I certainly look forward to uh, seeing what comments you get for this one. So until the next time, Heduch.